Greetings, everyone. I am here once again with another video. Um, I'm probably going to put my videos in different slots, like health, spirituality, etc. Because I know I kind of have those two topics which I talk about the most. I mean, this one's going to be about health. So recently, someone made a post about um, African American women, Black women, Moorish women, Melanoy women, whatever you want to call it, keeping their placentas keeping their placentas attached to the baby via umbilical cord until it falls off, which is what we call a lotus birth, and also um, taking the placenta home. So in both instances, the hospital um, wouldn't take your placenta, the whoever wouldn't take your, whoever delivered your baby wouldn't take your placenta. And it was an outpour. I commented on the post because I took my placenta home. And people, and I, and I commented on it and was like, yeah, you know, I, was, I took my placenta home too. Even though I didn't go into a hospital, but it's mine. So I took it home, right? And there was an outpour of women of color, black women, a few Hispanic women who were like, what? You can take your placenta home. How do I do this? Is it going to be a problem when I try to do this? I'm six months pregnant. Blah, 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 blah. So this is going to be my answer to that because... Right now, currently, and if you're watching this, this is probably you, you commented on that post. And you were like, what? I can take my placenta home? Okay, so I'm going to tell you. First, first things first, if you want to write a letter to your hospital or to your midwife or to your doctor, the information on how to do that is going to be um, um, below in the description box of this video. Okay. Secondly, um, for me, it's hurtful to see so many women not know what they, sh you know, sh to my opinion, what they should know about their bodies and what they can and they can't do. And a lot of women feel within the health system that they can't do certain things. And, oh, my doctor said I can't do this. And that is why I teach. That is why I have the classes that I have. And I've been in the progress of making them and why it's so important for me to get this particular class out that I'm going to to launch the reproductive revolution revolutionary reproductive health and birth options course because women think they have to take birth control women think they have to you know um, you know keep you know leave their placentas in the hospital but women think they have to deliver in the hospital it's so many different things that women think they can't do because somebody told them that they can't and um, I kind of have a revolutionary, you know, maybe a rebellious streak in me. And I don't do what people tell me to do. I do what feels right for me. Now, I do know in some states that home birth is illegal. I'm not telling you to break the law. That's not what this video is about. Um, but I know there are, I know that taking your placenta home or getting it encapsulated, which means um, putting it in capsules, um, which means somebody's going to take it, dehydrate it, grind it up. And put it into little capsules for you to take for your hormonal benefit. Um, that is not, a, from what I understand, that's not illegal. If it is, I didn't know it at this moment. Um, but from what I understand, a lot of doulas, um, and a doula is a birth attendant. So that is someone who does holistic, usually. But this is someone who does, who offers emotional support uh, during a transitional time, such as pregnancy, such as postpartum, um, such as labor. Um, some women even do abortion uh, doula help. So, um, if they do what a doula is. Anyway. Um, you know, it hurts me to see so many women that don't know any better or, you know, no one's told you. Because I, I honestly, I, I thought, you know, of course you can find this information out by yourself. I did. You know, but everybody doesn't have the same resources. And on the same token, you know. There's never an option given to these women. You know, that to me, to me, they're purposely kept in the dark. Dark. There isn't enough education. Sorry, my baby has hiccups. There's not enough education about how to um, avoid certain things and how to do certain things. And that's part of why I'm here. That is why I am a women's health educator. Because there are so many things that women are not informed Hi. of. You know, you they, they, there are people who just don't tell them. You know, the things they need to know to navigate this health system. So this is why I have the courses and this is why I'm expanding on the courses. 
So if you have a question about my courses, I'm going to do a revolutionary reproductive health and birth options course. That's for people who want to have babies um, or are pregnant now and want to know, hey, how do I get out of the hospital? Or how, 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 do, how do I have this baby and I end up with a C-section? How do I have this baby and I end up with, you know, some crazy stuff going on? How do I improve my chances of having a healthy baby and me coming out healthy without any scars, literally? Without any stitches, literally? Um, that's what that's, that's for. The natural family planning course is going to be for people who want to avoid taking birth control. Whether you want to actually plan for a baby or you want to avoid getting pregnant. This is for people who don't want to do that. The third option is going to be my holistic women's health course. That course is really an overall, but it talks about the different health problems that women have, what causes them, um, how to avoid them, herbs for those, etc. And there will be a certification course coming out soon where you can get, become a certified holistic women's health educator. And I'm working on, to have that launched by, um, by winter 2016. Okay, I also have some spiritual courses, um, and I will talk about those in a future video, but they are on my website, um, and that's going to be Astrology 101, Manifestation 101, and African Spirituality 101. Okay, so there's going to be a link below on where to go to download paperwork to give to your hospital or to give to your midwife or to give to your doctor stating that you want to, they have to release your placenta to you, period, and point blank. Now, this is another point that I'm going to make. This is why I did not go to a hospital. This is probably 20% of why I didn't go to a hospital to have my son. Here is my son here. His name is Amir. Amir is um, six weeks old as of yesterday, so he's six weeks in one day. He was born vaginally with no drugs. This is my second child. He was born vaginally with no drugs and there was no tearing and my son was nine pounds, two ounces. Um, some people, you know, I will say this. So the reason why I'm talking about this is because one, people ask, but two, there's been like, oh, you're lucky that you were able to have two kids vaginally and da, da, da. No, 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 no. It's because of the knowledge that I had. Now, I do think there's a, there's a chance that something could have gone wrong because there's always that chance, but that chance is much lower than most people think. Most people think, oh, if I have a baby... You know, I'll probably have a C-section like all my friends. Or, or like most of my friends. Uh, no. And that's part of why I'm, again, this is why I'm doing the course. Because I'll explain to you why there is such a, it's, it's, it's easier. And, and, it, it, and it, it pays better for doctors to do a cesarean, period. It's easier, it's faster, it pays better. You ain't got to wait around, it's quicker. You know, it's kind of like hitting the jackpot. And, you know, all they have to do is just say, hey, your baby's in distress. You got to go to the hospital, you got to take you to get a get surgery and most mothers are going to be like oh my god do whatever you gotta do to save my baby which is a natural reaction and but the thing is they're preying on that a lot of the time uh, well some of the time i'll say that there are doctors that prey on that i mean there are doctors who are wonderful and don't do that but if you don't speak up for yourself or have a doula or somebody there to speak up for yourself no one is bless you man and that's the, really the point um you ha you you need to be armed with knowledge I know I think it's pathetic that women aren't or girls are not taught some of this stuff, you know, during sex ed. They're just taught, oh, you're gonna have a period, you're gonna bleed this much, here's some pads. Um, they're not really taught a lot of like the holistic parts of it about your about your about your period, and um, they're not taught about what what this means. Um, I mean, they kind of tell you, oh, you can get pregnant now, but they don't really explain to you how you get pregnant. It's just so many different things. People like when the day is looking outside. But it's just so many things that aren't shared with women and, and girls. And this is why they're so ignorant about their reproductive systems. Oh, I didn't know that that was my cervix. Oh, I didn't know that the appropriate word for, you know, this part of my body is this. That has to be, that has to stop. You know, we're getting to a point where, you know, it's women having babies that don't even know what's going on down there. And that's not cool. But... I want to applaud everyone who signed up for my class and asked for more information because that means that they care. That means, hey, I want to know what's going on with my body, which I think you absolutely should. I think health is not something that should only be this specialized information to health professionals. I think that there's a certain level of health information that everybody should know. Maybe surgery should be left to surgeons, yeah. Maybe, you know, 
you know, maybe, you know, how to deliver a baby should be left to midwives, you know. But to just not know anything about your body, just know, oh, I can get pregnant if I have sexual intercourse, that's not enough information, you know. So, this is what you do. You're going to file this paperwork with your midwife or your doctor or your and, and your hospital. Hospital is a separate entity from health professionals. This needs to be filed with them. I think, you know, personally, if you get pregnant, I think that you should just up front. Can I take my placenta home? You need to ask around. Um, but this is also, like I said, this is why I do not advocate for a, a health for healthy women to deliver in hospitals because you don't, you know, you're kind of at the liberty of somebody else. This other entity that, you know, makes money off of you. And, you know, then they can tell you, oh, no, you can't do something. That was, again, this is why I did an out-of-hospital birth. I don't want anybody telling you what I can and I can't do with organs that have formed in my body to nourish my child. I don't want someone cutting the cord too fast um, because that does, that blood is supposed to, so the cord needs to be clear, first of all, before you even cut it. Then you have the option of just letting it completely stay attached to your baby, which is called a lotus birth, until you, um, until it falls off from the baby's cord. Um, and, you know, like I said, that's another option, but to just cut the cord immediately as the baby comes out, the baby's not getting a lot of blood, a lot of nutrients, a lot of oxygen that are still being transported from that placenta. So, kids are not, I don't want to say, I mean, I mean, they're just not, they don't get all of the oxygen and everything that they need. Their brains and their bodies are not being formed to their highest capacity because things are literally being cut short. They're being cut off too fast. One thing that you'll see that is a very common thing with the hospitals is that fast, quick, you know, there are a lot of, they, they want to do a C-section because it's, it's taking you too long in labor. They want to cut the cord and, and rush them off to do, do vaccinations. Um, they want to, you know, do all these things and make you go do this. A lot of these things that, that, are, that, are, that, are, that are done really quick and fast shouldn't be done so quick and fast. It, they should be, um... They should happen a little bit slower. There should be some time um, in between these different things. Um, like when my son came out, he didn't he didn't cry. It wasn't a it wasn't a big hoopla. It wasn't a big deal. They didn't hit him, you know. They suctioned his nose out in his mouth and just kind of waited on him to cry. It wasn't a rush. Obviously, he was looking around. And he was breathing. They checked his lungs to make sure his lungs were okay. Um, and just things in the hospital are just very invasive. So in the course, the Revolutionary Reproductive Health and Birth Options course, um, it's going to go a little bit deeper in um, the different interventions that you should avoid at the hospital, that you should do some research on before you actually take them, such as the vaccine, such as, you know, the position that you're birthing in. All of those things need to be taken into consideration. You know, by the position I birthed in, I was on all fours when I pushed his body out, is 99% of the reason why I did not tear. Not luck. You know, I, I was with a skilled breath professional, health professional, a midwife, who knew that, hey, this is the best position for this woman to birth in. Not, oh, let me just have them all lay on their back and the babies pop out and then, you know, if they tear, then I get extra money for sewing them up. No, not that. Not at all. This is, I strongly advocate for out-of-hospital births that you can not even have to deal with half of this stuff, honestly, because that's really where it comes from is that you're in the hospital and this is these are standard operating procedures and this is just what people do and you don't really get a say so or a chance every hospital is not like this this is not what i'm saying but a lot of them are um so that's really what this course is about you can take your placenta home the link to the paperwork that you need to file is below i didn't have to file this paperwork because my midwife told me straight up you can either take it home or you can you know, leave it with us, and we'll do whatever we do with it. Um, so it wasn't an issue for me. So that's so how you can avoid this problem is <laughs> just doing an out-of-hospital birth. Um, but in other instances, um, another thing you could probably do is to have somebody come up to the hospital and say that they're, say that they are your doula, and they're coming to pick up your placenta, and have them come get it. Um, you're gonna need ice to put or ice chest, something to keep it cold. Um, I put mine in my freezer, and then my intention, um, is and was to bury it afterwards as a Native American tradition. Um, yeah. 
So, this course, I plan on having this course done this week um, so that everybody can get the information that they need. Again, if you are like do now, like 38 weeks, you're just not finding this information, you need help, email me and you know I'll do what I can to assist you in trying to make sure that you get your professor to come home with you and that you have an easy and safe birth. Um, but yeah, you don't have to be your presenter with anybody if you don't want to. Um, the reason behind this is for myself, as a woman of color, I know that there are a lot of tests run um, on our placentas, and then once you give that placenta away, you're giving away all kinds of, you know, your DNA, your blood, all kinds of stuff that's on the placenta, your baby's um, DNA and blood, and, you know, if you're a person of color, and you are aware of Henrietta Lacks, and you're aware of the Tuskegee, Tuskegee experiment, um, there is reason for you not to want to give any of your organs over to the hospitals or to anyone for that instance, because it can make people billions and billions and billions and billions of dollars, millions and billions of dollars. And of course, you're not going to see anything of it. Of course, no one's going to ask you, is it okay for us to submit your stuff to a laboratory and they just do it? Um, or maybe you signed something and you were in labor and so you didn't really even know what's going on anymore. So, that is why I took my placenta home. I really didn't want to test run on it. I didn't want it to make the next fertility treatment for people who are unable to conceive. Um, because if that's the case, please run me my money. Um, that's why I didn't do it. And then, you know, really that's my main tip is to do an out-of-hospital birth or to just tell them straight up, I want my placenta. And if you want to lie and say I want to encapsulate it, tell them. Just tell them that, and they'll do whatever. Um, they can think whatever they want to think. They can think you're weird and crazy, and that's fine. Or you can just tell them, hey, I just want my damn organs. However you want to word it, that's fine. But I'm giving you the paperwork here to do so. Please have that conversation with your with your health, health professional. Um, and if you have to call somebody to be a fake doula, a pretend doula to come through and act like they're you know, a placenta encapsulation specialist to come through and get your do get your placenta so that you can do whatever you want to do with it, then I feel like that's your right. Um, like I said, as to my knowledge, there's no law that you can't, you know, take your placenta home. Um, not to, you know, not, not to my understanding. If there is, please let me know. Um, but I'm sure they're going to give you a hard time and look at you crazy. Um, but, uh, bust out your paperwork. And if you want to, or just tell them I want my stuff, you know, when it, when it first comes out and they cut the cord or whatever, have your ice chest ready for somebody to just put it in there and they can just stay in there until you go home or whatever, or have somebody run it home while you're, you know, in the hospital. I would not, uh, I, I just wouldn't take no for an answer because I don't know if they're going to be argumentative or, you know, or what. Uh, I don't know, you know, where you are or who you're going to be dealing with. Um, but my number one, my my main advice is to try, is to one, get a health professional that's cool with what you want to do and or have an out, out of hospital birth. If that does not work, if you cannot do those things, file the paperwork, um, it's your right, it's your organ, you know, if you want to take it home, um, you can do whatever you want to do with it as long as you're not harming anyone else, you know. So I hope this helps. Um, and if you are interested in any of my courses, um, please email me. They, everything should be up and ready for sign up within two weeks. Um, but I'm going to do some advertising for it and all that kind of good stuff. And if you're not signed up with my newsletter, please sign up with my newsletter so that I can make sure that you get all of the information immediately, fast, and in a hurry so that you can sign up and get whatever you need. So, hope that helps you. I hope that, you know, more women take take charge of their reproductive health and um take your placenta home please it's not it's, it's yours unless you want to donate it for research you know that's totally your option but other than that it's yours i wouldn't freely give away my organs so that people can run tests on it so i hope that helps and i hope that uh you know i hear from some of you guys soon about your experiences uh, me and amir are gonna say goodbye goodbye amir bye He's like looking around. Look around. Say bye bye. Good job. He said bye bye, you guys. All right. See you guys next time.